All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of really interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that we've got for you guys today, in Chris Bumstead's latest YouTube video, he confirmed the rumor that we all kind of really knew. A, he's no longer working with Ian Valier as his prep coach for the Olympia this year. And B, he reveals who his new coach is. His new coach is Hani Rambod. Now, Chris says in that video that it's not a secret. Me and Hani are working together now. We've been, t we've been together for a few weeks, and we started talking in August officially. So I don't know how long exactly it's been. I feel like it's been a little bit longer than that because kind of like he alludes to by saying that, it hasn't really been a secret to people behind the scenes. A lot of people knew that he was working with Hani. They wanted to keep it under wraps for whatever reason. Like I said, Generation Iron was just with Hani, and I believe that they were there filming Chris for that documentary they're doing about Chris. And I first heard that he had started training with Hani, it seems like a few months ago. So we already went over the reasons why he stopped working with Ian in the last video. Essentially, to sum it up, both him and Ian are Olympia competitors. They're both competing the same weekend, different categories. And Ian prepping Chris, I think, took away a lot from Ian actually focusing on his own physique and his own presentation and him having to also compete at the Olympia, worry about peaking himself while focusing on trying to peak Chris. So I think it's certainly going to be beneficial to Ian as far as how Ian looks at the Olympia. And I think it's going to be beneficial to Chris as well, because let's be honest, Ian is really a bodybuilder first, and I would say probably a coach second or third. Hani is a coach first. He's got decades of coaching experience. He's coached and peaked some of the best physiques we've ever seen on the Olympia stage, including Phil Heath, including Derek Lunsford, including Hadi Chupin, just to name a few. Admittedly, though, I don't know how many classic physique guys he's worked with, but I really don't think it's going to be an issue him, him working with Chris, and I think it's going to be interesting to see what kind of package they put together because we've seen so many really good versions of Chris over the years. I think there's a potential that this is going to be the best version of Chris that we've ever seen. Working with somebody as seasoned and as experienced as Hani, and with the track record that Hani has um, when it comes to conditioning. I mean, look at Hadi Chupin. Look at Derek Lunsford. Look what he was able to do for them. I, I, I can't wait to see what he's able to do for Chris. And regardless of who Chris was working with, I don't think it really mattered. I honestly feel that Chris would have won this year in 2022, whether he was working with Ian, whether he was working with Hani, regardless of who he won or who he worked with. He is classic physique. His structure, I think, is perfect for that division. And I'm, like I said, I'm just really excited to see what this partnership brings for Chris. But I, I think no matter what, it's going to bring him a victory this year. I think you can't really go wrong working with Hani Rambod. Now, next up in the news, we did get a physique update from Big Rami. And this time, finally, an update where you can see his legs. So this was in a YouTube video um, of a bodybuilder, a German bodybuilder named Steve Benton. And in this video, he's training with Rami. He's talking to Rami and he asked Rami to show off his legs and Rami obliges. And that is where we wound up getting the screenshot. So Rami has posted a ton of physique updates lately and kind of, this is kind of what he's done the past couple years shows a lot of upper body, pretty much shows his complete upper body at various points throughout the prep stages um, going into the Olympia but he usually saves the lower body for last or doesn't show it at all. And so this was kind of a rare glimpse of the lower body because like, like I said, all the posing videos and all the pictures that we've seen of Rami, especially lately, it's been all upper body. His upper body looks crazy, but he hasn't been showing off the lower body. And it makes people question, well, why show all that but, but hide this? And it makes it especially interesting because I feel like in the past, Rami has been criticized for his legs, specifically his quads. Some say that it's kind of an imbalance. And his physique, his quads are so big, they throw off his calves, they throw off his proportions, they throw off the way his physique looks. And then some people also say that the detail and definition is lacking in his quads. The separation in his quads is not what it used to be. Some have said his quads look lumpy, especially in recent years. So it has kind of led to some speculation as to why he does choose to not show them, especially during this prep where he seems to be looking so good. Now, in these pictures, the brief glimpse that we can see I think his quads look really good. You can see separation in the quads, obviously. You can see they're massive, obviously. And you can also see some pretty significant vascularity. And I, I kind of want to remind people that going into last year's Olympia, the narrative with Rami was that he basically didn't train for the majority of the year because of some of the personal issues that he was going through. He didn't take that Olympia prep or that really lead up to his Olympia prep as far as training and diet seriously at all, according to his coaches, according to people that know him. And, and they say really that the majority of the year, he did not even step in a gym. He did not train. This year, apparently, he has been training since the last Olympia ended. He's been training this entire year through nonstop, um, focusing on the Olympia. So supposedly, the fact that Rami looks different in these updates 
can be attributed to the fact that he is doing something different. He is actually training for this show year round since the since the last show ended. And I think that's really what we see in Rami's physique. That's why we're all so impressed. That's why we're all saying these updates look so good. That's why he looks like he's so on track because he is. I think it's that simple. Rami is doing it different this year and he's got a different mindset. And I think both these two guys that we just talked about, Rami and Bumstead both, I think the safest bet at this year's Olympia is that both Chris and Big Rami are going to win another title. Rami his third title and Chris his fourth. And the final story that I've got for you guys today, the latest physique update from Michael Crizzo at exactly one week out from the Prague Pro. So he will be competing in an IFBB Pro professional show next weekend. And this is his latest update looking absolutely full as a house um, compared to how he looked for that Olympia amateur where he earned his pro card. So this is going to be, this coming weekend is going to be the big moment for Michael Crizzo. This will be what answers the question, how good is he really? Is he going to live up to the hype? Can he beat some IFBB pros on stage in this IFBB? Keep in mind, he comes over from the IFBB Elite Pro. This is the big moment for Crizzo. If he does not win this show, I think that will be a serious halt in the momentum that he's had. Because right now, people are already jumping the gun and talking about how Crizzo could do at the Olympia. That's assuming that he wins this show to get to the Olympia. So... This will be the first step, and it will be a major milestone for him if he does win this show. Because if he doesn't, like I said, I think that will be a huge halt in momentum. But if he does win this show, then I think it's going to be all aboard the Michael Crizzo hype train going into the Olympia. Because he is a true wild card. Because he comes from that other organization, we've really never gotten to see him on stage next to any of the top names. Any of the big guys in the IFBB that we talk about today. We've never seen any of those comparisons. So how he looks next to them at the Olympia is really a complete mystery at this point. But first, he has to go against whoever's at the Prague Pro. And I'm sure that competitor list is literally going to come out any day now. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. Because as soon as that list comes out, I'm going to post it on the channel. Um, and that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. Just a quick one. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you leave a like on it. Make sure you subscribe. If you have not subscribed already, click that bell notification icon. And as always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power, my Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power, my secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, Give that one a look, and all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day. Dancing in the good light, everybody's feeling warm and bright. It's such a fine and natural sight. Every Dancing in the good light, everybody's feeling warm and bright. It's such a fine and natural sight. Everybody's dancing in the good